On Story is brought to you in part by the Alice Clayburg Reynolds Foundation, a Texas family providing innovative funding since 1979. Story, presented by Austin Film Festival, a look inside the creative process from today's leading writers and directors. In this week's On Story, a conversation with Men in Black screenwriter Ed Solomon. Part of, I think, why genre writing works is it gives you a, it's like a musical key to play in. If you're playing music, you could say, this is C minor, and we're in C minor, so it ne these are the notes. But if you're sitting there thinking, okay, which notes am I playing? You're not really making music. The genre you're writing in, it's got its own key. And the way you know is not intellectually. You just know when something's right or wrong. In this episode, Ed Solomon reflects on the genesis of the blockbuster sci-fi comedy, Men in Black. You know, it's funny, you often start a project thinking this is the one that's going to really mean something, and sometimes you start them not sure what it's going to be. And uh, I remember I got a phone call from Walter Parks, who was the producer of the movie, and he said, we had this thing, I don't know if it's going to be anything, can you look at it, if you liked it, uh, and it was a comic book, it was just, they had four little episodes of this comic book. If you like it, it's probably the kind of thing you can knock out in six weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Four years later, <laughs> yeah, and I think the beginning of this gray hair, um, <laughs> and then, yeah, this was the beginning and completion of my gray hair, uh, yeah, Men in Black kind of, you know, happened. It was, it was amazingly complicated to, to get together. It's funny how sometimes something just kind of flies out, and uh, sometimes it just takes a lot of work to make it feel like it just flew out. And sometimes it just feels like it flew out the wrong way. <laughs> so I got this comic book, and I wasn't sure because there was a, there was a, a great concept to it. Um, and the concept was uh, agents who, and I think it was they were dealing with demons, and it wasn't comedic, I remember. And I remember writing a note saying, I kind of feel like for this to work, it would ha I said, I don't think I can do this, because I think for this to work, it has to be a comedy. Like, it has to have, like, a comic, like, like hook, uh, and, and even, like, a comic tone and mood where, like, uh, I think what I wrote was, like, maybe, like, there's aliens living among us already, and, you know, maybe we don't know it, and maybe these guys know it. And I started, like, writing out, I started having all these thoughts about it. It was a great experience overall. Once the script went in, uh, I, fir I first gave a draft to the producers, and they didn't—they weren't all that happy with my draft. I think they thought it was too heavy and too complex, too abstruse. I think, um, and they wanted it to be sort of lighter. In fact, I had a third act that was about something very different. Um, now, at the end of the movie, it's you know Will and Tommy with guns battling the big alien. And I had had this whole other third act, which was, um, if I recall correctly, it was there was something happening uh, under the small town. And the small town was the town that Will Smith's character came from. And uh, there were all these people coming to the town because the president was making an old-fashioned whistle-stop tour. And Will Smith had, Will's character, Jay, had initially been a Secret Service agent who thought guarding the president was the greatest, most important thing you could ever do, being with the most 
powerful human being on the planet and making sure he was safe. Um, and the philosophy behind it was, and you don't even know what's really going on, Jay. You know, you don't even know, like, the president meaningless, you know. And there was this whole thing where what was really happening was, and this was the story that Walter Parks and I had kind of worked out, what was really happening was there was uh, an alien under the ground. And, oh, and the, and the big question of the movie is uh, not are there aliens here, it's why are all the aliens leaving the planet? And that, I thought, was an interesting kind of hook in, right? Why are they leave? you know, not, not, guess what, they're aliens, it's, no, we're way beyond that. It's why are they leaving? That's the problem, right? I was fired five times and hired six. <laughs> so it's like, yeah, so I kind of won. <laughs> not sure. Yeah. Um, actually, what happened was, I turned the script in, and uh, The Fugitive had just come out, and they cast, and we got Tommy Lee Jones off The Fugitive, huge. It was fantastic. And uh, because of that, uh, they want, and they hadn't cast uh, Jay, the, the Will Smith part yet. And because of that, um, they wanted to change the point of view of the movie to be Tommy Lee Jones's point of view instead of Will Smith's point of view. And uh, I was like, you can't do that. That's stupid, <laughs> you know, in my way. I was told, you know what, why don't you take a break and go on that vacation you had planned? <laughs> I was like, you sure? Because I know if we need to rewrite. And they're like, no, no, why don't you go away? Seriously, literally. No, no, take a few weeks. That'll be good. So I am, in all places, I, I go to England. And then um, I took a, like a four-day jaunt to uh, Russia, where my cousin lived. And it was early-ish days of the internet. And uh, I go onto the internet, and there's a guy giving screen, it's like screenwriting tips. And I'm like, oh. Who's this a-hole, you know? <laughs> let me see what, you know, let me, well, who is he that thinks he can give screenwriting tips, right? And then, like, it was when the, when the stuff just sort of ticked up on your screen, like, took a long time for it to make its way up. And so, I look, he goes, so-and-so is currently writing Men in Black. <laughs> I'm like, in Russia. So now I'm trying to find a payphone and go... <laughs> <laughs> making, you know, with my charge card, going, uh, uh, hi, I am read this. And they're like, oh, yeah. Um, we just thought, you know, break the spine a little, the Tommy point of view. You know, you just, just have your break. You're going to love it. <laughs> it's like, oh, God. And I wrote this long 10-page memo where I outlined everything that was stupid about the script <laughs> and wrong, you know. And uh, later, Barry, jo uh, Barry Sonnenfeld, the director, actually said to me, um, when I had been hired back at round two or three, I don't remember, uh, he said, that memo, that's what got you more fired. <laughs> <laughs> and I had been. I was more fired. I was actually um, re-fired. <laughs> kind of like a typo of beans, but I was, yeah. So the original script took place all over the country. Barry wanted to set it in Manhattan. So, you know, you might think that's an entirely different movie. And in certain ways, it is an entirely different movie. But actually, it's not when you look at just the movement of the movie. Start with the Will Smith character, figure out who he, you know, who he is, bring him into this world. You know, he became, an, he became a cop instead of a Secret Service agent, etc. So Barry Sonnenfeld and I sit down and we watch The French Connection. And he says, French Connection with aliens. <laughs> So we go, all right, French connection with aliens. Cops on a beat. OK. So, so I wrote that version. And I've worked on a lot of movies where they say, this isn't the genre, or you can't, you can't do this in this genre. And when Tommy came on board, um, like I had really written it with, uh, to me, it was a comedic premise. And I had written it as a comedy. And Tommy did not like that. And he was very, very wow. direct with me about it. And if I had only kept the letter he wrote me, oh, it would have been so awesome. Because it was really, let's say, direct. <laughs> he wanted it to be a drama. And my argument was, this is not good enough science fiction to be dramatic. It needs the kind of leap of faith that you can take with a comedy. It needs the mood that sort of 
ineffable thing that, that you sort of feel, but that's the envelope that holds the whole movie in mind, like holds the whole movie. That feeling that you have had to be a comedic one because it was too ludicrous. And I was told two weeks into shooting by Barry, mm -hmm. Tommy just figured out we're doing a comedy. <laughs> 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 Which is, I think, part of why he's so great. Mm -hmm. I do think the opening of the movie got the, the balance right, you know, of who are you introducing and how are you telling the story and using Tommy as a bit of a mystery. And I remember it was, um, I remember very specifically going, I want to tell a story now. I, these guys are like the INS agents, but with the universe. How... And then I went, oh my God, what if it's like a fake, I like an INS situation with, you know, and you've got these pompous, you know, INS agents and they're, um, they think they know everything and then these guys show up and, you know, you could sort of do a cool teaser thing with Tommy, but you didn't have to go into the whole world with him. That ended up blending it about right, you know. We'll take it from here. Who the hell are you? INS Division 6. Division 6? I never heard of Division 6. Really? Who you got your money on, D? Tough call, Kane. Okay? <laughs> Oye, Bato. Que pasa? Como estas? They did a lot off the cuff. Well, well uh, Will in particular, um, he was super funny. And, you know, there were lines in Men in Black that, um, I, you know, I, I, I couldn't have written, you know, that he, that he kind of winged and, and was right on. Like, there's a scene where he lands in the bus and um, I, I think he says it's raining black people in New York or something like that. It'd just be raining black people in New York. You know, I would never, like, I wouldn't have had the confidence to write that. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, and, and Tommy, Tommy made changes. Tommy, Will added, you know, Will would, would riff, and he was great. I mean, he was spot on. And Tommy would cut and was actually spot on when he cut. You know, actually. Um, so, for instance, there's a scene where um, Will has just seen everything for the first time and sits down on a bench, and Tommy is basically explaining, you know, well, in what I had written, oh my God, it took me forever to write. I thought it was beautifully eloquent. It was full of shit, is what it was. But <laughs> I, can I say that on this? Sorry. Because <laughs> it's full of poop. Um, so it was, it was this long, eloquent, what I thought was eloquent, I'm sure it wasn't actually, but description of, yeah, you know, you just, you're, you're trying to find a suitcase that you can fit this whole thing into, blah, blah, and get a handle on it. I had all this stupid metaphor. Long, 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 Tommy, Tommy, I just remember, <laughs> and I was like, oh my God, no, he's, you know, and then he just kind of does it with a look. And you go, dang, that's way better, you know? <laughs> Humans, for the most part, don't have a clue. They don't want one or need one either. They're happy. They think they have a good bead on things. Uh, well, why, why the big secret? People are smart. They can handle it. A person is smart. People are dumb, panicky, dangerous animals, and you know it. 1,500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was the center of the universe. 500 years ago, everybody knew the Earth was flat, and 15 minutes ago, you knew that people were alone on this planet. Imagine what you'll know tomorrow. Uh, you learn a lot from stuff like that. When an actor, usually when an actor cuts lines, it's their right, their right to do that, for sure. The, the whole first sequence, first movement of it, to me, feels very much like the movie I always imagined it to be. And there's a scene in the pawn shop where Will Smith goes in and uh, thinks he's going to go, uh, they're going to go mess up a, like a, a low-life, you know, pawn, pawn guy, right? And um, uh, Tommy Lee Jones ends up shooting the guy in the head, and Will Smith gets, what the hell, you know, what the hell? And then the head grows back. Why don't you show him the imports, Jeeps? Hey, Kay, how are you? Showing the imports right now. 
I got out of that business a long time ago. Why do you lie to me, Jeeves? I hate it when you lie. Now just hold on a second. I'm gonna count to three. He'll do it, Jeeves. One. I'm telling you, that man does not look stable. Two. But you know what? Talk to me. He, he is just crazy when he's like this. He's always crazy. Why don't you get a massage? Take a cruise. Three. Drop the weapon and put your hands on your head. I warned it. Drop the weapon! You warned it. Don't make me kill you. You insensitive. how much that stings. Show us the merchandise, you're gonna lose another head, Jeeves. That, to me, was, the, was an iconic image from, from the movie that, that, to me, was, was what I, that kind of thing was the thing that I had always imagined the movie would be. Like, uh, um, you think it's one thing, and then it turns out to be something, whoa, totally different. And then it turns out to be something totally different, even from that. Did you write that scene like that? I, in fact, initially that character's name initially that character's name was Waits, because it was based on Tom Waits. I wanted it to be like Tom Waits, and he was called Waits though because it was spelled differently. It was spelled W E I G H T S because he needed weights on his feet because gravity worked in reverse for him. So he would always like fly up and hit the roof, and so he had weights on his feet. That was that was the original idea. God. Yeah. I, the aliens I had pictured differently a bit too. Like in my mind, in the in the original draft, there was one set of aliens that there was one alien that's feet were on the ceiling and his head was down. So every conversation you'd have with them were like mm -hmm. this, but their head was going this way. And one alien was like a series of spheres that just hovered, and like they weren't as um, personified, I guess you know, as uh, as they became. W one thing that I loved about like the tone of the movie, and I thought Barry got really well, was um, that you kind of think you have the, you know what is happening, and then something weirdly surprising happens. Like Tommy's in, there's a scene where Tommy is, uh, pulls, pulls over a guy on the road, and in the back, and Tommy plays the scene very straight with the driver, and in the background, Will is like, this whole thing with an alien, you know. Hey. Ship, I didn't see a departure plans for today. You didn't go. Well, it's uh, well, it's an emergency. What? You're doing fine, Ace. What emergency? What's the rush to get off the planet? All this stuff? But you don't comment on that part of it. You know, that's just happening. So the dog idea I was sitting on Barry Sonnenfeld's uh, porch on on that trip and saying it needs to be something where it's like you go to the, like a key kiosk, and you think for sure that guy's going to be an alien. And then I remember Barry fi finishing the sentence going, and it turns out to be his dog. And it's like, yes, 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 exactly. And so that's how that came out. Now that's the worst disguise ever. That guy's definitely an alien. You don't like it? You can kiss my furry little butt. You busy, Frank? Sorry, Kay. I can't talk right now. My flight's leaving. Oh, oh, get your paws off! Call the pound. We got a stray. And then he was called Frank the Pug because uh, there's a screenwriter, Scott Frank, and <laughs> he always, we always name each other in each other's things in some kind of way to try to mess with the other guy. So <laughs> I'm always like a pedophile clown and. <laughs> Yeah. I was rerunning every day for sure. And, you know, because uh, I guess it gets up on its feet and then the personalities of the characters comes out even more, or come out even more. And, um, yeah, it starts to... I remember rewriting the Regic scene, which is the scene where he pulls the guy over where he's giving birth to the alien. I remember rewriting the Frank the Pug scene. Um, uh, I don't remember why, like, I don't remember what wasn't working and why, but it was just, you know, you get something up and it gets its own personality. Um, there's, a, there's a scene where uh, Tommy Lee Jones is interviewing Will Smith for the first time. Uh, a scene that I thought Tommy played perfectly. M his gave one of the favorite deliveries of anything I've ever, I've ever written, which was um, when Will when he asks Will, what you see? And Will says, um, describes, this guy said, you know, he said the world's gonna end. And Tommy just goes, uh, he say when. Who are you? 
Did he say anything to you? Yeah, he said the world was coming to an end. Did he say when? And the way he said it was just like so fantastic, you know? I, was, I loved that. There was still punch up. Mostly I was doing punching up at that stage, you know, new jokes. I, what I, the reason I brought up that scene with uh, Tommy and Will in the interrogation scene is I remember Will had, some of the jokes in there were Will and Barry, like this, a joke about, I think it's a Stairmaster joke or something like they had, they had come up with. And, but I remember writing a couple versions of that scene to try to give him more attitude. And uh, why is it that none of the other officers saw either of these two events? Well, sir, some of the other officers are a little soggy around the midsection. I guess that's why they weren't able to keep up. Edwards, if you were half the man I am. What the hell are you talking about? I am half the man that you are. And what is your problem? My problem is you being all up in my damn face. That's my problem. You know, I think he threw him off the roof. Sorry, really, maybe you next. I want to hey, talk to you. Ten minutes, you take I'm the best shot. Now. Tough guy. Take ten minutes on a Stairmaster, you pudgy bastard. Because that's the other thing. My J character initially was more kind of, he was cocky, but he wasn't like really like strong as, as Will. And Will's a strong presence and, you know, um, so it was a lot of bringing the movie up to that, you know, for Will. Nobody wanted to direct it. Nobody. We, we thought, in fact, I remember Walter saying, just like he said to me, six weeks, we'll knock it out, right? He goes, we're going to throw it out, and I bet we get 25 directors, you know? We threw it out, and like, <laughs> we're like, hello, anyone? And um, I remember um, when Barry said he wanted to do it. Now, this was before Get Shorty had come out. Uh, in fact, he was sh shooting Get Shorty. Um, I remember Walter Parks, the producer, saying, well, so shall we discuss the works of Bergman, Kurosawa, and Sonnenfeld? As a joke, like, he's better than we thought, right? Barry, then Get Shorty came out, and you're like, holy moly. Like, Barry was like coming right into like his sweet spot, you know? Because Get Shorty's fantastic, great script by Scott Frank. You know, great direction by Barry. So we got super lucky, because Barry was, you know, coming into himself, so that was, total luck because you know there were big fancy so-called a-list directors that everybody was fantasizing about having direct that movie and um it's another situation where the right guy happened to be there you know and that was barry so most of my life i mean we could be sitting here talking about any number of projects with any number of characters that i spent years thinking about nuancing, developing, and, you know, changing, cutting, adding, you know, et cetera. But it, it didn't happen because the right forces didn't combine. So I look at Men in Black and I think, God, that was, a, I'm so lucky. I'm so lucky that that hit. And I'm so lucky that these incredible people worked on it. Really, I mean really lucky. It, I think there was a lot of merit to the script and to the work I did, but really, like, that was amazing that that happened. It gave me incredible gifts in my life. It let me work for a long time after that to do more stuff. It brought my career to a next level, which was really great. But it could have happened on any of them, and it might not have happened on this one, you know, I guess. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. I remember going to, this, to a screening of it and watching it in its final form and walking out into the lobby and sitting down in a corner and crying, like, in a good way, but like crying like, oh my God, it worked out. Mm -hmm. And it worked out because some really good people were working at the top of their game and they all came together. I mean, Barry did an amazing job with it. There's a great score by Danny Elfman, um, this guy named Eric Brevig, the visual effects supervisor, um, of course, the incredible, the cast, you know, it, it came together, people working really well. And man, that just boom, 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 elevated Bo Welsh's production design. Very different than I originally imagined it. Because, you know, if you see the film, Bo has a, a really clean, really kind of super cool look. 
Uh, I had originally imagined the Men in Black offices as cluttered. Um, in my head, totally different visual look. Barry, Barry's take and Bo's design with that take, you know, I think are way better. The movie looks way better than I would have ever imagined it. Everyone did better than I had imagined. Mm -hmm. That was awesome. You've been watching A Conversation with Men in Black screenwriter Ed Solomon on On Story. For more On Story, check out our free podcast at onstory.tv or search the iTunes store. And get the book today, On Story, Screenwriters and Their Craft, on Amazon.